Hi, my name is Jeff Hoagland, and welcome to my first video talking about uh, mathematics and deck building in TCGs. Today we're going to be talking about something that's known as the hypergeometric distribution. And while it sounds kind of scary and is looks rather complicated when you look at the Wikipedia page here that I have in front of me, its application in TCGs and deck building is actually much more straightforward than all of this complex definition up implies. The goal of today's video isn't going to give be to give you a complete understanding of everything the hypergeometric distribution can do. We're just going to look at it and how it applies specifically to uh, deck building in TCGs. The base of what we're going to be working with today is using a hypergeometric um, probability calculator. And the main thing you need to understand in order to use this is that there's four different inputs that we, we use in the calculator. So the first thing, the population size, that's how big your deck is, how big the thing is that you're drawing cards out of. So in uh, Magic and Hex, that's 60-card uh, decks, generally speaking, or a little bit bigger. Um, the number of successes in population are the number of things you have in your deck that you're looking to draw. So for example, if we wanted to calculate the probability of drawing one of our four ofs, we would put a four for the second argument in the calculator because we have four copies of this card we're looking to draw in our deck. The sample size is how many cards that you're drawing out of your deck before you, you try and see the thing you're looking so. So in this example, we're looking for a four of out of our deck and our sample size, let's say it's a four of that costs four resources, and we want to be able to play that card on turn four. So what's the odds that we've seen our four of by turn four? Well, if we're on the play, we have seven cards in our starting hand, and we've drawn a card on our second, third, and fourth turn. So that means we've seen ten cards out of our deck by the fourth turn. So that means we want to know what are the odds of drawing one of our four copies in the first 10 cards that we draw out of our deck. Then this last argument here is the number of successes in the sample. This means how many copies of the thing that we're looking to find do we want to calculate are in there. So we want to draw at least one copy of our card. So we'll put a one in here and then we'll ask it to calculate the probability. And there's two different probabilities here. The first one says for x greater than or equal to 1, and what this means is that the probability of drawing one or more copies of our four of in the first 10 cards of our deck is 0.52, or about 52%. The second number here is one that usually we're not interested in as much in TCGs, but it's the um, probability of drawing exactly one copy. So this probability calculates if we draw one, two, three, or even all four of our four ofs by that fourth turn. And then this talks about drawing exactly one copy. Now, obviously the probability of drawing a four of is always going to be the same, but the thing that's most interesting about using the hypergeometric function is when it comes to constructing resource bases. A lot of the times people ask me, how do I arrive at the number of uh, thresholds or um, color producing mana sources in a, in a mana base or a shard base and uh, something like this is what I use to calculate the those last you know how many how many blood shards do I need or how many swamps do I need to cast my spell consistently on time um, so for an example if we see here on my uh, my cost here it says I cost three and I require three different blood thresholds here so if I wanted to calculate the probability of being able to play myself on turn three, if I had, let's say, 21 sources of blood or purple in my resource base. So if I have a 60-card deck and there are 21 sources that can play me, I need three of these by turn, turn three, my sample size would be... By turn three, I have seven cards in my opening hand, and then a draw on turn two, and a draw on turn three, so I've seen nine cards, and I need at least three of these 21 things to be able to play myself successfully on turn three. So we hit calculate probability after entering all of those in, and you'll see here it says, well, with 21 blood-producing resources in my, in my resource base, I would have a 67 or almost 68% chance to be able to play myself up on turn three. Now you can see how adding more or taking away 
those resources uh, affect the probability of being able to play your cards consistently. So for example, if I added a 20 second blood source to my resource base and hit calculate, you can see I gain 4% uh, 4% more likely to be able to play a triple blood card on turn turn 3. For another example, this is one that's very common in standard decks in Magic right now. Uh, casting the card Grasp of Darkness, which requires uh, two swamps on turn two. Um, I had uh, a friend send me a deck list earlier today that had 16 black sources in it. And um, so we wanted to know what is the probability of being able to cast this Grasp on turn two with just 16 black sources. Well, assuming we're on the play, we've seen our seven cards in our opening hand plus one more. So there's going to be eight cards in our sample. And then we want at least two of our 16, so we need two black sources to play that Grasp of Darkness. So we hit Calculate Probability. And with just 16 black sources, we're only going to be able to play that Grasp of Darkness on turn two on the play about a little bit less than 70% of the time. A uh, number I'm more comfortable with is if we kick this number up to 20, which is what I, I recommended in his, in his mana base. If we have 20 black sources, we're going to gain over over 10% on that likelihood that you're going to be able to play your your Grasp of Darkness turn 2 on the play. So again, just the four, four key pieces here. The population size is how big your deck is. The number of successes in the population is the number of the thing you're looking to draw. In this case, we're looking at how many black sources we have. The sample size is how many cards you're looking at out of your deck. So in this case, we're looking at turn 2, which means we have 7 cards in our opening hand plus 1 draw step, so 8. And then number of successes in the sample, how many of those resources we're looking to have in those eight cards. So in this case, we want, want, want at least two of them. Now, the one thing that um, we're kind of using this in a, in a generic sense and that it's close enough, the one thing that this doesn't account for is that this 82% number here also includes hands that, you know, aren't keepable. For instance, it includes hands, so two or more, this includes all eight of these cards could be resources, and obviously you're not going to keep a hand like that. It includes hands that have seven resources, but those numbers are small enough that it's like a negligible difference that this is, this is it's good enough for government work, as we used to say. Um, so hopefully that's a little bit educational and talking about how you use this function to kind of construct resource bases and get a good idea of how how many sources you need to play your cards on time consistently. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in a comment below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Um, if you want a link to this hypergeometric distribution calculator, you can find that in the description of the video. Thanks for watching, folks.